Hello everybody and welcome to my channel, welcome to my studio. I hope that you are doing well and I am back today with another bird in watercolor and I'm going to be giving a tutorial on this and right now I'm just getting everything set up, everything's kind of slipping and sliding around as usual. So first let me tell you what colors I'll be using. This is the palette that I've basically been stuck on for several months and the funny thing about that is that I would like to switch it up but I always run out of one of the colors right in the middle of the painting and so then I squeeze more out and it just becomes a vicious cycle where I'm constantly replenishing these colors one at a time and so I never really run out of them and have not managed to move on to a new palette and I absolutely refuse to waste paint. So yeah, anyway, from the left to the right I have yellow ochre, then pearl red, and then right next to that is raw sienna I believe, but I'm not using it, and then next to that is sepia, not using that either, and then Payne's gray, and then Next to that is Thalo Blue, which I'm also not using. So really I'm only using three colors. My Yellow Ochre, the Pearl Red, and the Payne's Gray. And right now I'm just doing a quick sketch in with a colored pencil, keeping it very light because this painting that I'm doing, I really want to focus on the light effect. And so this swan is backlit. And so the edges of this one are going to be the lightest parts. So I just need to be pretty careful about my lines. I don't need to be as careful in the areas where there's a lot more shadow. But especially around the neck, that's where we have a lot of that backlighting effect going on. So I want to get a good form going here. And there will be a template available for you if you're interested in that. And I'm just basically getting in the most basic shapes here. That's really all that I feel I need, but for the template, I may add in a few more details, especially some of the feathers that I didn't sketch in for myself. So some of those will be into place because I did kind of struggle with the feathers during this process just a little bit, but for the most part, I really kept this painting very loose and carefree, and I really focused mostly on the light effect and the interesting colors that I observed in the photo reference. And that photo reference is from pixabay.com, my favorite copyright-free photo reference source. And so that is also linked below in the description if you would like to get that photo reference for yourself. And this is a special video because my dogs will not be snoring in the background. And the reason for that is because it is a beautiful day outside. And so I kicked them out. They're in the backyard playing, barking, running around, digging in the dirt, even though I gave them both baths today. So I have a little bit more peace and quiet than normal and will probably be able to do my voiceover a little bit more seamlessly than normal. So that's kind of nice. I'm really happy that the weather is getting nicer. I spent a lot of time outside today, although I did not get to do any plein air painting. Actually, I did do a sketch outside, so I think that kind of counts. Anyway, so I'm going in with a light wash of the Payne's Gray in the background. I considered leaving the background white as I have been doing in a lot of my more recent bird paintings. However, because I really want to have a strong backlight effect, it wouldn't have worked as well if I had allowed the background to be white because there wouldn't have been anything for the white light around the edges of the swan's neck to contrast against. So I kept the background fairly light and very, very simple. Didn't at all try to replicate any of those subtle value shifts that are in the photo reference. And I got a little bit of Payne's Gray into the neck area, so all I had done there was just use my paper towel to kind of blot that up. 
And now that I've got the background in place, I won't really do anything more with that during the entire painting. And so now I'm going to start using that Payne's Gray again just to block in the larger shadow areas on the bird itself. One thing I think that might be a little bit challenging about painting a swan or anything that's white in its local color is that we have to stop thinking about the bird as being white because some of the values on this bird are actually going to be quite dark and have a lot of different color shifts going on. And that's actually one of my favorite things about painting anything that is white. It's just so interesting to get lots of shadows in there, lots of reflected light, because you can see so many colors reflected on an animal or an object that its local color is just white. So I'm letting all of these shadow areas really just kind of merge together and become one. Using a very large brush, this is my cat's tongue brush, it's a faux squirrel brush and so it holds a lot of water. And I'm using my faux squirrel brushes throughout this entire painting. And now I have added just a little bit of my Purell Red in with that Payne's Gray because I'm seeing just a very slight shift in temperature in those shadows. And just spilled my water everywhere. So I'm working on an incline and I think it's a little bit steeper for some reason today. I've been kind of messing with it a lot so I ended up kind of spilling my water and had to actually dump out some of my water because it was filled too full. And now while everything is still fairly wet, I'm going to go in with a very light wash of my yellow ochre. And compared to these other colors, that yellow ochre actually looks very nice and bright. And there's just going to be a few areas that I leave completely white. You'll see a little bit on the back of the bird, so right around the back of the neck where it meets the body. I've left a little bit white there. And then right here, I'll leave just a little bit of white in between the yellow ochre and the background. Not much, but it really is going to go a long way. I guess it's an example of a little bit going a long way when it comes to this lighting effect. All right, so I switched out my water here. And I also had let this whole thing dry. So I took a little break, went outside, Again, played with the dogs, threw a ball around, and then came back, and it was nice and dry for me because now I'm going to start going in with some of my darker values. So this is just Payne's Gray again, and I'm going to start mapping out some of the darker markings, the eye, and the beak, but I'm not going to go in with my darkest value possible at this point, so there's still some room for error here meaning if I make a mistake, it's going to be okay. But I am being pretty careful here because I want to make sure that I get these shapes pretty much right. And my sketch that I did was pretty loose, so I can see my lines a little bit through this initial wash that I had laid down, but I'm really trying to analyze where everything really needs to be. And I'm also just making some guesses as to the placement of some of these feathers. For the most part, my aim here is just to leave the feathers very loose and abstract. In this painting, I will be doing a lot of dry brush technique. But right now I'm just going in with a more saturated Payne's Gray to mark in the general texture of some of these feathers. And this area is all in shadow, and I may have to darken the values a little bit more as I go. Right now this looks a little bit weird. I feel like maybe I went a little bit too dark with these textures right off the bat, but in the end I think that I end up adding quite a bit of value to this area anyway, and so it becomes a little bit less stark. And now I'm really going to need to start letting this dry because I can't add 
much more value to this while it's still damp and so I'm going to need to move on to another area. One thing that I know I'll need to do with this beak is really take that value down quite a lot. That beak needs to be completely in shadow. It's not really getting any light. And then I'm going to do a glaze of the red on top of it. So I'm adding a lot of red into my Payne's Gray. And what I'm going to do with this is use it to really deepen this core shadow. So right around the top of the bird's head, which is facing downward, I'm noticing a lot of really dark but warm tones. And so I want to make sure that I capture that. And then as the form of the bird's head gets a little bit closer to the eyes and beaks, and beak, I'm sorry, there's just one beak, uh, it gets a little bit lighter. So I'm kind of leaving that area alone. And now I'm starting to do some dry brush here. Although at this point I'm thinking that my value in this area is dark enough and that's why I'm going ahead with my dry brush. But in actuality, what I will end up doing is really taking that value down quite a lot and deepening that shadow and so I'll end up doing a little bit more dry brush on top of that. And remember to dry brush, all you're going to be doing is loading up your brush with pigment, but then blotting it off on your paper towel in a way that removes the water from your brush, but it doesn't remove a lot of the pigment. So you're not wiping your brush off, you're just kind of dabbing your brush so that some of that water can be soaked up by the paper towel. And now I'm going to use the same color, although I've added a lot of water to it, so it's more diluted, it's lighter in value, so that I can make these feathers on the top of the wing a little bit softer. And they're getting just a little bit more light anyway, so I don't want them to be as dark as the shadows that are forming the feathers below. And again, even though I have a photo reference right in front of me, my goal here was not to exactly replicate every single feather, just to kind of get the general texture correct. All right, so now I'm really going to be able to go in and deepen these values. Sometimes I think that you just have to take your eyes off of an area, then come back to it and really ask yourself if those values are correct. And again, when you're working with a figure or an animal or an object that is white in its local value, it's hard to think of it as having really deep dark shadows, but it certainly can. And there's a lot of red in this mix and also some Payne's gray. So it's kind of a nice muted violet. And I think that that really complements well with the little bit of yellow. Doing a little bit more dry brush in here just to get some of the directional lines of these feathers. Very light. And starting to realize that I do need a little bit more value down in this area. I have to be really careful with this Pyrrhal Red. It's very intense and strong. It's actually a color that I rarely have to replenish on this palette because it's so strong, a little bit goes a long way. And then there's just a few small areas that have more intense yellow. I don't wanna go overboard with this. I really like a lot of the light yellows that are already in place. They're already creating a really nice light effect. But just right here where this wing is folded up against the body, I'm seeing a little bit more intensity. And then I'll add just a bit of red into that. Of course, just a little bit of red really took that toward reddish orange really fast. So I had to add in some more yellow. And then there's just a few areas that I see that are just intensely warm, a very warm orange. And then I'm going to dip my brush into the water and then just kind of move this along just to create a nice soft edge. And I don't want to completely cover up the yellow in that area. So I basically place that 
glaze of orange right in between that muted violet and the yellow, just allowing a little bit of yellow to peek through. And now I'm taking the value of the beak way down again. So I'll apply this just as kind of a general value and then this is what I'm going to end up glazing over with the red. And I'm noticing that the beak is a little darker in value toward the end of the beak and then where the beak meets the head of the swan. It's just a little bit lighter, so I wanted to capture that. So this is where I realized that the shadow on the neck of the swan is just not deep enough. And I really need a nice deep and rich shadow here so that I can really bring out that backlighting effect that I really want to go for. So I had to be a little bit brave here and just really go in strong with my big flat brush and really deepen that shadow. And I think that you can already see how much that affected that light. And then I'm going to add just a little bit more value down here in the wing as well. And then right at the core of that shadow, I'm adding even more just straight Payne's gray in there. And then with just a little bit of water on the brush, I'm helping that edge to soften just a little bit. But I don't wanna mess with it too much because then it will end up muddy and overworked. I added just a little splash of red right where the neck is meeting the body. And that's not quite what I was going for, so I'm going to just kind of lightly dab that with my paper towel. And then there are going to be a few areas with a little dash of red, but right now I'm just using the red to glaze on top of the beak. And so you can see that that's really going to warm it up while keeping it very dark. And then I'm going to add just a little splash of red right here on the crown of the head. And then I will also add a little splash of red right where the neck is meeting the body where that orange is. I'm not going to cover up the orange. I'm just going to add a little splash of color. And now with just a few of these feathers on top of the wing, I'm just going to give them a little bit more definition. Don't want to go overboard, so this is a pretty diluted mix, and I'm just going over some of those marks that I made earlier. These are going to be much smaller marks. And again, I'm really only paying attention to the direction and the texture of these feathers, not trying to replicate every single one that I actually see in the photograph. And now with this Payne's Gray, I'm going to try to deepen the darkest values on the eye and then the dark markings of the swan. Although I don't think on camera you'll see a big difference, but I'm also kind of just adjusting the shape of the eye there. But this area is all just going to be generally very dark. But it does help to add a little bit of definition and makes the swan very recognizable as a swan. And I'm just about done here. Just kidding, I am done. So this was it. I hope that you really liked this little tutorial and I hope that you 
may want to give it a try. It was really fun, a nice loose painting, and I thought that this lighting effect was just very beautiful and interesting. If you liked this tutorial and would like to see more, I do hope that you'll subscribe to my channel. And here is just a close-up, a scan of this painting. I really like how it turned out and I hope you do too. And last but not least, I hope that you're having a wonderful day. Thank you.